Hey guys, it's Amy, your golf coach. Today I'm tuning in to practice my irons with you guys. So here's the thing. I have always wondered why my students, a lot of my students, prefer to use the premium line golf clubs such as Honda's and Majesties, other than the fact that, you know, they have this brand name, higher price and you know all that recognition and all that good stuff so i was really lucky to work with both the brands two separate times in the past five or six years and i got to try a lot of their golf clubs um, and i figured out firsthand that it's a lot easier to launch the ball and the strong lofts gave me a lot of distance i was hitting my seven irons averaging about 155 yards which I was very happy about. Um, but then, you know, because I'm so used to using performance clubs, like, you know, I was always using men's clubs since I was um, 12 years old. Uh, my normal specs is men's stiff shaft, steel shaft in the 80s grams range uh, with smaller heads, not cavity backs. But then using, you know, the premium lines kind of made me miss using those performance clubs and really compressing the golf ball, maneuvering the ball. So I really wanted to come back to performance clubs. I got super lucky this year. I signed with GTD. So I got their drivers, woods and wedges. And then I got the Mira irons with the steel shafts and small heads and no offsets on them. So I'm really, really excited. But I figured out that because I'm so used to hitting the ball at about 40% power with the premium lines, um, I couldn't give it all because whenever I did hit him hard, they would either turn on me or, you know, sometimes it would fly 15 to 20 yards farther. So it was very inconsistent if I gave it all. So, you know, I was babying it. It was still launching great. So I had no complaints. Coming back to performance clubs, I found out that I lost a lot of distance because I lost a lot of swing speed. So this winter, I really want to get my swing speed back and gain more distance because the one, the, the irons I have are not strong offs. So um, yeah, I just want to really get back to compressing that golf ball and really moving that ball um, like I used to when I was on tour. So I am doing this practice with you because I want to share my journey and also turning the camera on makes me have to practice. I've been talking about this since my Korea trip but for the past couple of weeks, I did zero practice. All right, so I'm gonna focus on, um, so I lost a lot of golf muscles, so I'm losing a lot of rotational speed on the way down. I'm gonna focus on that. And because I lost a lot of my golf muscles, my swing is very like flimsy, like it's moving all over the place and very loosey goosey inconsistent. So I'm gonna focus on those. Um, if you've seen my bunker, bunker practice a while back, um, I really had to like do no talking to focus. So I might do it again today. All right. Okay, so I do tend to lift a little bit at the end because I've had several back injuries. So I can't do like 100% coil like all the other tour pros. The last time I competed, competed was 2006. So my back's been weak for a long time now. So I go with about 80% power as my full, full power. I don't always play 80%. So instead of doing a full coil, I tend to lift a little bit to take pressure off my back. It's just like physical limitations I have to live with. So I'm okay giving up some distance and a little bit of consistency to protect my back so I can finish 18 holes with less pain. Um, so here I tend to lift a little bit. So sometimes I get like lifty arnsy. That's when I hit it really short. Um, and right now I feel like the back swing position is very inconsistent. Like I'm ending up at different spots with different tempo. And on the way down, I feel the turn is really slow. So I'm just gonna work on getting to the desired top position to get that coil without hurting my back. Uh, and then I'm going to try and gain some speed on the way down. That's where I want, did I turn? That's where I want, that's better. So I'm just going to completely stop at the top to get into the coil I want and then just hit some and just only focus on the backswing. So coil tight, top position. Not worried about how I'm hitting. I'm not worried about downstream speed. 
I am checking out the launch monitor though. 73 miles with like complete stopped at the top, not bad. Oh, that was RMZ I need to like turn. Tiny little difference. Three more. Oh, that was better. very easy. I have to stop myself and turn again. See, that's why I was losing a lot of distance. Poor coil. So my coil, I'm feeling it. I'm gonna go ahead. 73.9, not bad. I'm going to go ahead and get my setting in the right spot as well. I tend to get lifty and go across the top, which is bad. So <laughs> it's, it's like a lot of stress on my back. So I tend to not be able to get into that perfect position because then my core and my back isn't strong enough to bring it all down. So I tend to get a little bit loose here so I don't have to do as much work on the way down. Know your physical limitations, I guess. Thinning it, I don't really care how I hit it. One more time. I'm getting into the right position with the right setting at the top. When you coil well, you can't breathe. Oh, it's better compression. I don't think I'll be gaining club head speed today, maybe in a couple couple practices down. Doing the right positions, repetition work on the range will help you regain those golf muscles, correct golf muscles and get them stronger. But it's just for two, three months time, it's not enough time to really build them strong. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in the gym and do some golf fitness to strengthen the muscles um, to help me gain more speed. So yeah, I'll be working out too, I guess. <laughs> Haven't done that in a while. So from here, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, get it in the right position and really engage your obliques. So feel the coil, feel the set, two things at the top. And then from here, I'm really going to engage the obliques tight. Don't let them go. So I gain a little bit of rotational speed on the way down. Once again, I'm not worried about how I hit it. I'm not worried about the clubhead speed at this point, focusing on the positions and techniques. Coil and set. Obliques rotate. Oh, that was better. So when I engage my core correctly, it puts less strain on my back, like the joints, right? So it hurts my back less. As opposed to if I don't engage, then it strains my back joints a lot. And then sometimes I throw them out. more position and set so like instead of here i'm setting the club right oh wow just gained one more mile but i ended up gaining like 20 yards so the compression, the angle of attack, compression, and smash factor, all of those calculate into distance. I missed the compression. Position set, speed through. <sighs> speed was terrible. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm not gonna stop at the top. Just gonna do full speed. I gained one mile, that's good and gain 20 yards, I'll take that. Five shots, regular full swings, thinking about position set and speed. I don't care how I hit it. 
Oh, that was so hard. It was like, whoosh. turn, boom, slow. Oh, the turn through wasn't that great. I was tense. That was terrible. That was good though. 77 miles. That's good. My goal is 83. Position set, speed. Oh, that's better. Position set, speed. Oh, that was so armsy. It was terrible. <laughs> it was like armsy. Oh, that hurts my back when I get armsy. It just puts a lot of strain on the back when I hit through with the arms instead of like my oblique leading and bringing the hands through. I didn't quite get it there. It was like hanging and then I just started rushed. Oh, Instead of like arms rushing. Position set, speed. Almost. I'm just gonna do the drill again. Position set, completely stop, and then speed. It's just have to get tighter with the coil, a little bit more in sync with the turn and the hands moving, and then get that speed faster on the way down so I engage my Leaks. Now I'm gonna go back to my regular swing. Position set, speed. It was slower, wasn't it? Let me wrap it up. I used to hit like 20 of these when I used to play on tour or when I was a junior golfer competing at the end of every practice. I had a left-handed club in my bag. Okay. All right, guys, that was a good session. Um, I focused on getting the right position going and right coil going in the backswing. So I really worried about the body rotation versus hands lifting. I got in the right place so I wasn't lifting and too far out in front of me. I focused on the position and setting the club, completing the coil. And then on the way down, after I got that going, I went to the next step and then did the exact same thing, but I added speed for the downswing. I really wasn't expecting this kind of results right away. I gained like one mile, I think, on my club speed, which is very little, but then my compression was better. My um, smash factor, a lot of other things were better on the data. So I ended up gaining 20 yards. <laughs> So my goal was really get to 145 with my 7 iron. It's not strong lofted, so 145 I, I'll be happy with. It's shorter than what I used to hit on tour, but I'm not, you know, my body isn't built like that anymore. So I'll be happy with 145 at the end of this winter. And I really want to get to, um, I have to do my calculations, but I was thinking of getting in the low 80s for my swing speed um, but I'll, I'll do the more thorough calculations and get back to you on that um, 
So I will have to hit the gym so I can gain the golf muscles in such short period of time. I can't just do it on beating balls alone for two months. Um, it's just not enough time. I normally don't practice much at all, but um, now I'm giving lessons twice a week. I will turn the camera on after my lessons or in between the lessons and squeeze in some practices. So twice a week is what I'm shooting for. Thanks for practicing with me. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. I hope to continue this and share my journey and show you some improvements.